Um, just in relation to the, the one barter account, um, Mr Collins, was that always the case that there were three fed into the one, or was there ever a case where there were other than one barter account? There was two barter companies feeding into it up until the end of 2021, and then a third barter company came on stream. So there were two barter counties, Co uh, companies up until the end of 2021, 20, and then a third? Yeah. Um, Marona. Marona. Marona came on stream at the end of 2020. Right, and Marona was basically set up. What was the, the nature of that? Well, well, was... well the, reason, the reason they came to us was because of a particular client, um, an insurance client, who wanted to advertise to Maroma. So they came to us to Maroma. Okay. Um, those three companies on the bartered account, would they all pay the 35% handling fees? with each of those companies. Yes. Have we any idea of what cost that would be to um, RTE if all three, at the end of each year, if all three separate companies go into the one barter account, each of those are paying 35% fees on every single transaction? I mean, that's some money. Yeah, well, over the, the life of this barter account, based on the information supplied to you yesterday, the total cost going through the barter account, gross cost was 1.6 million. But the net cost mm. that RT got benefit of was about a million, so it was in the region. So what would the, the thirty, the thirty five thousand? Six hundred thousand. It would have we would have paid additional. That was what thirty five percent in handling fees. Six hundred thousand. And what would be the standard handling fee on average going through a bar account? It's uh, speaking to different people. It's I've yet to come across someone that said that they they've ever heard of a 35% handling fee. It's well, not the norm, is it? No, but if I can help, um, as, as we've said, most of our uh, business comes to media agencies and the standard commission level with media agencies is 15%. Is what, 15%? 15. So we're paying 20% over and above the standard fees. For business So we're we paying double and more. For business that we wouldn't normally get, but... But, but you're handing half of it, you're handing over a third of it back. Well, 50, well... We've tried to explain it in an explanatory note, Deputy, but 50% of the, of the money goes directly into cash, and it's the other 50% that's cashed out at 0.66, so yeah, that's actually but, 0.33. Yeah, but the point is, the average work, um, handling fees would be 15% on average, but here we are paying 35% handling fees over double the cost of the average one. Correct. Yeah. On extra revenue, we wouldn't get. Well, it won't be extra for much longer if we keep paying those sort of fees. Um, I just wanted to, the, the explanatory note on the barter account that we were furnished, um, who actually wrote this explanatory note that was furnished to the committee today? Yeah, that was inputs uh, from our comms team with Geraldine and her commercial team. So was it yourself, Geraldine, and your it's team? A combination of people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I read through it and I thought, I mean, you're actually at a stage where you're showing utter contempt for this committee. If you read through it, um, the barter accounts, they are used by RTE solely, underlined in the context of commercial activity of selling advertising airtime. A barter account may be used for the purpose of hospitality and entertainment in relation to advertising clients, media agencies, and to ensure RTE can continue to increase its advertising revenue and to retain its growth going forward. It appears on the balance sheet of RTE and the appropriate controls are in place regarding oversight and spend. But that's, that's simply not true. In fact, it's a lie because the barter account was used to funnel top up, secret top-up payments to Ryan Tuberty. He used the barter account to raise false invoices under the heading consultancy fees. Well, firstly, there's no intention to show contempt to anybody in this situation, Deputy, but... Um, but that's, is the, am I incorrect in what I said? We, in 2022, we raised two invoices on the barter account. First time ever, as I've said before, that I was asked to do that to pay talent. Uh, for, the la for the previous 10 years, we have used it as described. Oh, so we, this, this was just a once-off, is some sort of an excuse for funneling secret top-up payments through a barter account that you actually had the cheek to have this drawn up when it's an absolute lie, when you have a record of funneling, raising false invoices, funneling through the, a barter account in an effort to conceal top-up payments. 
The aim of the note, Deputy, was to explain what a barter account is. It's quite complicated. Yes, we, what so it, well, it's, it's yeah. to explain what it is, if you're doing the right thing, if there's good governance, if there's proper oversight. But this sneaky, underhand uh, deal that was done, designed to deceive, as the, the chairperson has said, was done through the, this barter account under your watch supervision. If I can answer, I would like to say I was not part of the intention to deceive. Ah, I, right. Well, yeah. that's Give my truth, Deputy. Really, for goodness that's my sake. Truth. You raised the invoices under cons the heading consultancy fees, known full well that there were payment for Ryan Tuberty, correct? I, yes, I yes. knew there were payments for Ryan Tuberty. I didn't know what agreement had been made. It doesn't with matter. What you, knew, you knew that those payments were for Ryan Tuberty, yes. and you raised those invoices and put them through under the heading consultancy fees, which is false accountancy, whether you look at it or not. And then you tried to, you sent in that statement today, known in full knowledge that there was no oversight, that you did what you did. And you insulted this to committee by sending in the explanatory note on barter accounts. If only you did do it the way it's supposed to be done, then maybe we wouldn't be here. I want to raise the issue of the, the Renault deal. Again, it appears to me extreme lengths were gone, uh, were, went to, to pay Ryan Turberty the first 75. I know we ended up paying the three 75,000. Um, payments, but the first 75, which was for the appearances. But when we spoke about those, when, um, firstly, what's, what was the total cost of that Renault deal to the taxpayer? Um, so, uh, from, from the barter account, which is, is, is commercial, based on commercial and based on additional commercial campaigns and additional commercial revenue, I understand your view that it's public money, but I think it's important. I know but we it, have a single it's, pot. It's public money. But, what um, was the total cost of the deal? The, because if you look through the, the barter accounts that we were furnished this morning, um, if you look through, the, there's other line payments. There's the building cost sets of 22,000. There was accommodation costs of 1,200. The three payments for the gig costs, 47. So what was the total cost? To the um, taxpayer. I, I don't, I, I want to give an accurate answer, it was 115 by 2 plus the number that we published last time, which I think was 40? 40. 40. 115 by 2, and that was for? <laughs> that was the 75,000 euro that was cashed out of 0 0.65, which, we, mm -hmm. which is 115 yeah. and by, then, for the two years, and then the events, which <coughs> from memory deputy is just under 40,000. 40,000, and with the, those events, under 40,000, would they include the three sets, the building costs for the three sets, because they come to in the at 22. Amount, to, to the best of my understanding, yes. The payments for the gigs cost, that was 47. And then there was accommodation costs of 1,200, so that's not 40,000. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the cost of, of actually hosting or setting up no, the gigs. No, I asked you, oh gosh, I asked you what was the total cost. Okay, of the well then I'll, I'll come back to you with all of the costs added up. I mean, you didn't think we'd, we'd want to see that today. I just want to come on to the um, slush fund, if you like, um, for the want of a better word. Uh, one of my colleagues there uh, mentioned the 200 flip-flops at a cost of 5,000, and you think of um, RTE crying poverty, RTE looking for an increase in the licence fee, um, and then this sort of Celtic Tiger splurging was going on. But there was one thing I noticed, there was the 10 tickets that were purchased for the IRFU. It said that only six were kept for commercial. Where did the other four tickets go or to whom? We originally had 10 tickets and then when we did, renewed the deal, we, we got six. Um, that's, I wasn't aware. The first deal that was uh, agreed with, with... But did you not purchase 10? No, we purchased 10 under the... Under the um, uh, support and permission of Noel Curran when he was Director General and then when we were re replacing them we reduced it to six because we knew it was expensive so the ones that I was responsible for were originally ten as agreed by Noel and then reduced to six. Okay I just want to touch back on um, some of those uh, jollies if you like and just again when it comes down to costs etc but would it be standard practice um, in any company it was, listened to you last week about attending functions and family members and friends and um, information here that I was given that, you know, say in your case as the commercial director, that your husband um, would have attended many of these events, a lot more than I had mentioned last week.
But I just thought in, in general, if you're at work, you're at work. Now, I don't bring my husband to the restaurant here. I don't bring him to the canteen. I don't have him tallying along because I'm at work. He doesn't bring me to his workplace. When you're, it's your job to entertain these clients and, you know, in the, in the corporate governance sense, why would your husband come along with you at every single event and, you know, accessing whether it's matches, whether it's Fleetwood Mac concerts, go on and on, with tickets that were purchased by RTE, when another, say, commercial interest, advert potential advertiser could use that ticket? Um, well, Deputy, I have had a um, very clear policy on plus ones, which I... Um, yeah, but plus ones are all very well for the client, but for, the, for an advertising client or whoever else, but for yourself, to be bringing the hobby along to concerts, dining, you name it. As I've said, um, uh, you may or may not know, um, I'm due to retire at the end of next month, and my job is currently being advertised. Developing and managing key senior level client and agency relationships is key and stakeholder management skills and ability to build rapport and create trust, credible, trusted and strong working relationships. Credible that is a, trust. That, that is a key part of what I do. Credible Deputy. trust, you said, I, I think after if you, what we've heard over the last two, two weeks. I think if you were to speak to my clients, I think if you were to speak to the people over who who during the period of the last 11 years brought in oh, one I'm point... Sure that, one, I'm, sorry, sure they finish, plenty to, I'm sure they'd have high praise the lavish um, extravagance that was splurged on them. They, how could they have anything but, but high praise? But when you say about credible trust, <coughs> and given what we heard from you this week and last week, well, that, there's a big question mark over that, and I don't think there's many would disagree with that. Uh, am I allowed to respond? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, um, we also provide you with the information that across that 11-year period, I was responsible for bringing in revenue of 1.65 billion. That's your job. That, that, yes, it yeah. absolutely yeah. is my job. Yeah. But part of that job is maintaining relationships. This is people selling to people. Uh, RT has a very good track record of, of retaining clients. Client retention mm -hmm. is really key. And of what, over the period where I brought in 1.65 billion, we spent 0.1 percent, as you know. So as a cost of business, uh, compared to any other media company, any other tech company, I think this stacks up. It may be unusual because we are dual funded, but I answer on, for the commercial side of the house. Would you say, given what we know... Do you want to just in conclusion, because we're way yeah, over the time. Just given what we know now about the raising the, the false invoices, the funneling the money through the, the barter account for secret top-up payments, can you honestly say as commercial director, that your position is, is tenable? Well, I, I guess that's not for me to decide, Deputy, but as I say, I'm due to retire in eight weeks' time, so I will have a conversation with Kevin Backers when he comes in next week. I would like to also say that from my, from my part, side, I'm not sure my position is tenable because the invasion into pr my privacy, the effect on my mental health, and most importantly, the erroneous uh, uh, reports on both Twitter and in newspapers about me and my husband has crossed a line that I do not find acceptable. For the record, my husband and I paid for our own hotels and flights to Chicago, and I'd like to say that for the record. Okay, thank you. Um, so